Okay, we are at uh, the uh, fifth lecture, should be the beginning of the third week. And uh, the last lecture we talked about the uh, writing tensor equations in the four dimension space time. Then if you, those equations are automatically symmetric under learning transformations, so therefore they're relativistic. And uh, the four tensors, four dimension tensor of rank one, which was, means it was weight index, are really just four vectors. We talked about the position uh, vectors and the uh, four velocity vectors and the four momentum vectors. And uh, also we talked about Dell operators, okay, which are naturally covariant, and those are naturally contrary. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to go to tensors uh, with uh, two indices, rank two. Uh, the first half, we were talking about the electromagnetic field tensor, F mu nu. And the second half, we're going to talk about the energy movement, the stretch tensor, T mu nu. Okay. So electromagnetic field tensors. Uh, we have the space, three space components, the time component together form the four components of uh, uh, four position. And energy and three components of momentum forms the four components of, of a momentum four vector. Now, what about the three components, the electric field, three components of the magnetic field? Uh, what, what to do with them? And the fact, remember, we show that the electric field can transform into B field and back and forth. So therefore, they have to be sitting in the same tensor. Okay. So it turns out they are components of uh, a tensor rank two with two indices, but they are anti-symmetric tensor. It means if you interchange row and column, you get a minus sign. Okay. Now, if it's, uh, if you if you fold the, uh, the matrix along the diagonal, uh, they are you get a minus sign. In particular, the diagonal element had to be zero because uh, whatever the element equal to itself, uh, minus itself, it has to be zero. So therefore, the totally independent four by four has 16 elements, and the, the, the four el diagonal element is zero. So therefore, only left with eight elements divided by two because they are related by minus sign. So indeed, there are six components that just fits into the six components of electric field magnetic field. In fact, they turn out to be uh, the the uh, the first uh, first row and uh, uh, zero zero component zero because diagonal element was zero, and then the uh, uh, the first row uh, electric field was minus sign, and then the first column is the same as you want, but it was change of sign. Okay, so this is an anti-symmetric uh, matrix for the electromagnetic field. And uh, the Maxwell's equation, uh, for example, the, the Gauss's law, the divergence of the electric field is equal to, you know, equal to the current. So this is just the Ampere's law with the displacement current here. And uh, now these, uh, here's one equation. Here's uh, three equations. So these four equations can be written as a four dimensional tensor as the divergence of the electromagnetic field tensor F mu nu is equal to the four current. Okay. And the four current is, uh, again, the zero component is C times the charge density, and uh, the one, two, three component is ordinary uh, familiar. Uh, Three currents of the uh, the currents of the of charge. Now I've written down here the F mu nu as with the low indices. Now if if I need to run in the upper indices, then I just using the the metric in this case the inverse metric tends to raise it. Because I contract the indices alpha, and I raise to become upstairs mu. Uh, contract in this beta become upstairs new, so F mu new, and uh, because remember eta mu new is minus one 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 one, so it's just basically appropriate. You have to get the, basically change the first column, first row sign, and uh, but the rest actually uh, do not change. 
So therefore, this expression can be written as f zero i i one two three is equal to, of course, equal to minus f i f zero, and uh, and as uh, simple to e one e two e three. Okay. So f i j in particular, for example, is written in terms the the uh, Vita uh, symbol. For example, f one two f so one two so it should be this one here and you check f one two epsilon one two k summed over because all will be zero if the only survival is, is three components so that's equal to be three and for the homogeneous part of mass location no magnetic monopole and Faraday's law which you know we talked before can be written as the four divergence of F tilde. F tilde is defined to be the dual field. It was is related to F mu by actually contract uh, the indices alpha beta into into a four dimensional Levi's Vita symbol. And uh, uh, when you work out, that's simply equal to change electric field to magnetic field and magnetic field to minus electric field. So, I'll give you a little more detail. Well, we talked about indices i, j, we go to one, two, three. And when we talked about uh, the uh, Lovitch Vita symbol i, j, k, which is anti total anti symmetric, it was if interchange the position of e, any of the two indices, uh, neighbor indices, you pick a minus sign. So, if epsilon one, two, three is one, then it interchange the position of uh, uh, one and two, so become epsilon two one three, have you minus one. Okay, and if you change one more place with the one and three, you pick another minus sign, become plus one. And the nice thing about the loose one of the things you can write the the vector product uh, uh, a cross b with the ith component simply as epsilon just like a little bit of i j k j k summed over with the index uh, uh, j and k of the, the vector indices and so if a happened to be uh, or one of them happened to be a del operator and so that's of course that's become curl and uh, uh, can be written also in terms of the little bit symbol if I make Calculation much easier, neater, and you can get so easier to once you know that let me see this at once, and all the rest of these pro property follows. Now, this is a three dimensional space for four dimensional space, the indices go right from zero, one, two, three again. Uh, but for each dimension, the least you can use four dimension, you have instead of three. Three dimension, three indices, four dimension, four indices. If I have talking about five dimension, you would have to have five indices. And uh, again, you set the zero, one, two, three to be one. All the rest is by uh, any odd permutation, you pick a minus sign. Okay. And of course, make it clear that because it's anti symmetric property, any two indices are same, like say two, two, one, then the symbol had to be zero because you interchange. Get back is minus itself, so it's the only way it can be is zero. So, for example, let's see how this the fact that the Gauss law and Ampere's law can be written compactly as one equation like this. And remember, I copied from the last page the the various components the F uh, are very highly related to electric field and magnetic field, and various components of the current uh, full current are. Uh, charge density and current. So let's check this equation. Actually, it just represent these four equations. Now, in order this first, again, like all these equations, the, the indices have to match. Uh, on, on the right-hand side, I have only one free the new, which matches the index new on the left-hand side. And the extra index mu had to be summed over. Uh, so there's upstairs, downstairs, mu are summed over. Okay. So so there's four equations because uh, the index free index new can take a zero or one, two, three. Suppose you take a zero, let's say, then this is uh, uh, 
uh, on the left here side, del mu f mu zero. Now mu is summed over, so mu can be zero or can be one to three, uh, right? Again, so it's i. So again, there's a i is the summation side, the sum over one two three here. Okay. And uh, now f zero zero is the diagonal element. The field tensor has to be zero, so the first term vanishes. The so second term involves f uh, i zero on top. F i zero is equal to minus e, so I have a minus e. Okay. And notice now this i in this has some lower, so this therefore this is a divergence. So minus divergent e equal to minus of the charge density, because j zero is charge density. The c just cancel this c here, so that's just the Gauss's law. Okay. So this equal this. Now for the free index nu to be i, again, I just, just nu equal to i, and again, the mu index is sum over can be zero, can be one, two, three. Now you, you cannot use i again, but you already use i, so you better choose some other uh, indices. Again, it doesn't matter what name you choose, as long as it's different, I choose to call j, okay? And of course, it's understood to be summed over, and the free index nu equal to i is here, okay? Again, f zero i here is equal to e. So, so this is the, uh, the three component electric field, and del zero zero is one over t. It's different respect to c t. So one over c different respect to t. Okay. Now f j i, I can plug in this this formula here. F j i is equal to minus of epsilon i j k. So I just put this relation here. Okay. Now this is simply is a curve operator. You play this by this. So therefore you can see this is just the uh, uh, the ith components of the uh, Ampere's law. So this is uh, so that's why we said it can be much more compactly in terms of the, uh, in in relative four tensor uh, expressions. Now, of course, writing them in four tensor form uh, make it clear these equations are covariant. You know, so to say manifest covariant because it's obviously you know they are the res <coughs> symmetric. So in other words, once we know this holds in one frame, then it's automatically we know it holds in the in another frame, the prime frame. Okay. And here we will check explicitly. <coughs> So for the for example the f prime mu nu, there are two contravariant indices, so there are two L factors, and the, the indices must match, the other indices must contract it, alpha contract with alpha, beta contract with alpha. Same with the del operator, which is a, which is a covariant component, so therefore transforms L minus inverse uh, Lorentz, and again indices match because the free index mu, but the gamma index must be Contracted, same with J prime, which is contravariant, so it's L. Okay, so this goes to here. Now, put them together, we can uh, we can put the, the the L inverse L right next to each other because there's indices mu is some over. So, so this involves there's a matrix matrix multiplication between the inverse L and L, and uh, so the rest I don't we don't do anything just. But now the fact is that L is multiplied with L inverse, so this become one. So the, the, the index is gamma alpha. So when I do that sum, simply means I replace wherever there's this gamma by uh, by alpha, or rather alpha. Yeah. Okay. So in in this case, the only place there's there's gamma is this. Uh, gamma index is the del operator. So, so now the fact is that uh, both term has the same Lorentz transfer. For, I can factor them out the L nu beta factored out, and the, then left with uh, the the four divergence of f and the plus one j. And this, of course, is just this equation here. And uh, it, it matched this here, 
So therefore, <coughs> this equals zero, and so therefore the prime system is that's what we want to show. This equals zero. Okay. So so this you know you can see the the whole point is that even though this term looks like but it's it's a full vector because the extra indices are summed over. So each term trans uh, four vectors, so they all transform as, as L, which can factor out. So therefore, this relation is the same in different frames. So here is the uh, break exercise. Uh, what I want you to do to, to check, knowing the fact that the EB are components of this rank 2 tensor, we know how our rank 2 tensor is supposed to transform, and then you want you check it recovers the the relation we got them previously uh, through some ways more uh, laborious calculation, but also uh, right this way you don't know where, where they come from. Well, it came from 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 here. So I want you to check. I want you to check in two ways. Uh, simply by checking the components. Meaning, uh, for example, if I am interested in how b prime uh, b sub x prime B sub x prime is you should check is f prime two three components. So if I take two three components, and then I sum over the that means alpha, the that means beta. But you you should check the only non-zero components are the one whose alpha equal to two, and beta equal to three, and these are just one. And this f one two, uh, three is simply b. So therefore, if I b prime. Uh, X is the same as B, B, BX. Okay. So that's one way you can. This, this I always say the simplest way is just you, you just plug in the various components to check this and you recover all these uh, relations. Uh, another way, which uh, I don't really recommend, but at least I think you should know, is that you should think, view these as matrix multiplications. Okay. And uh, so therefore, this is a. Three, Four by four matrix. This one, each of the four by four matrix. Now you notice because this alpha contract with the first, so this, this is alpha. This trans, transposed as uh, with the second index. So therefore it involves uh, 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 here just order matrix. Then you have to transpose. But it turns out this transpose matrix on the other side uh, because it's symmetric matrix really doesn't matter. But but the order matrix should be placed this way. Then you do the most matrix multiplication, you recover all these relations. Okay. The reason I I, I would say the first method is, uh, is preferred method, because this only works for the case of rank two. For example, if I have rank three tensor, the rank two rank three tensor cannot be represented by matrices because uh, if I if I have a, a, a Three-dimensional matrix. I mean, just just not 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 uh, possible. So so like the, the second method doesn't, doesn't apply for other ranks, uh, but the components always works. Doesn't matter what rank you're talking about, you know, it can always work. Okay, and also it's really simple because here involves well, the tricky part. You need to know the order of matrix multiplications, and uh, but still, I think you should know this is uh, one possible for this case, the rank two tensor. Okay, that's the first part, first half of lecture five.